Artzuka! Hey, I'm Jeremy. Let's Artzuka. <laughs> Ahoy, mateys! I've got me a treasure map, and we're going to use it to find us our treasure! Oops. There's something wrong with this. This map looks too new. Wouldn't it be better if it looked old? Let's take a look at how to make new art look old. If you're making an old treasure map, the first thing you need is the map. Here's mine. I drew it on some white paper. Using white paper works best for this. Treasure maps are usually old, which means they've been around for a while, and the edges would get frayed. Why don't we gently rip the edges of this map to make them look like they've been around for a long time? So I'll start at this corner right up here, and I'm gonna hold on to this piece and keep ripping down, and look at this. If I move the piece of paper that I'm ripping back and forth, I get these really cool lines. Of course, there's no right or wrong way to ripping. You can rip yours any way you like. All right. Now we'll do this long side right here. Here's another tip. If your rip starts going into the map, keep your finger here so it doesn't go too far in. Now I'll get rid of my extra paper here. This treasure map looks pretty new, even with the ripped edges. When paper gets old, it turns a kind of yellowy color. Here's an artist's trick. If I take this wet tea bag, I can use it like a sponge. The tea colors the paper a yellowy brown color, but the picture still shows underneath. If you drew your map using water-based markers, it might smudge a little, but that's okay because it's an old map, and you can always redraw your lines if you want. Ah. If the bag breaks, just work the T into your paper. It might even make your map look older. Once I've covered this whole thing with my tea bag, I'll set it off to dry. Check out this one I made earlier. Doesn't that look great? We're going to add some very watery black paint and use the tea bag to lightly paint the edges of the map. But first, before I do that, I'm gonna use some extra paper and lay it down because this gets extra messy. I have a tea bag right here. I'll dip it lightly into my watery paint and then just dab and wipe along the edge like this. Now this is a really cool trick that's gonna make it look extra old. You can even use your fingers to work it in. And see how it makes the edges really dark? And then, once you're happy with that, you need to let it dry. Now here's a dry one. And now, for the big finish. I'm going to take thinned out white glue, that's glue mixed with water, and a brush, and brush the glue all over the map. This is gonna give my old map a shiny surface. And we want to cover the entire page with this thinned out white glue. It looks gooey right now, but it won't dry this way. It dries clear. Before it dries, here's a little fun thing to do. I have some shiny, glittery jewels I found at a craft store. And I can add some treasure to my map. These will stick to the glue I added. I'll take a few of these bigger jewels and lay them down like this. Now here's one that's dry. See that? It dries clear and shiny. My work of art. I could hang it on a wall 
or I could add one more step. I know it's hard to crumple up your own work, but doing this makes it look really old, like it's been used over and over again. Now I have a perfect pirate masterpiece. Did you miss some of that? To make your treasure map look old, start by ripping the edges of your map. Then dip tea bags into water and sponge them onto the page. It'll make the paper turn an old yellowy color. You can use the tea bag again and dip it into watery black paint to color the edge of your map. Brush the whole thing with some white glue mixed with water and it will give it a shiny look. While the glue is still wet, you can add glitter and sparkly jewels to your map. And the final step, crumple your map up into a ball. Okay, I know it's hard to crumple up your art, but it will make it look super old. For more fun ideas like this, check out artzooka.com. Artzooka! My mom's really special, so I'm making a really special gift for her. I'm going to start with this collage that I made and turn it into something my mom will really like. I love collages because you have to really think about the person you're making it for. I made a collage for my mom. I found pictures of things that she likes and will mean something to her. I cut them out and glued them onto cardstock. She really loves gardening, so I took a lot of pictures of flowers and trees and put that in there. And she's always talking to me about how I leave towels laying all over the house, so I thought she'd really like it if I got a picture of some nice folded up towels. I'm going to turn this collage into a huge flower for my mom. Okay, flower petals. Imagine how one petal looks. My mom loves lilies, so I'm gonna draw one long lily petal. But you can make any flower petal you like. I just need to cut it out. So with my scissors, I'm gonna very carefully cut along the outline that I made for my petal. Now doesn't that look like a beautiful petal? The colors are amazing, and if you look really closely, you'll see I have some of the pictures for my collage in here. Now I need to make more petals. And this could be my guide. And again, with my marker, I'll trace in the shape of the petal. Once I've done that a few times, I can cut out all my petals, and when I'm done, I'll have enough to make a full flower. Now let's tape them together. To make this easier, I'm putting my petals with the collage side facing down. And then, I'm ready to tape. So with some colorful tape, I'll lay it right down over top like that. And now I need something to help me roll it up, and I think I have a good idea. Hmm. A big cardboard tube. I want the white parts of my petal facing outwards. I slide my tube out and fold the petals out. I have another idea and this will make it look even more special. To make the inside petals of the flower, I'm just gonna go back to my collage and trace my hand. It seems crazy at first, but trust me, this is going to look amazing. Now that my hand is traced, I can cut it out. Now here's one I did earlier. It just looks like a hand with a collage on the inside, but if I roll it up, 
put the back of the collage facing out, then tape it together, and then fold the fingers out, I've created the middle of a flower. So I'm giving my mom a flower and a high five. I made a couple of these and when I put them inside of each other and put those inside my big flower, and I have the middle of my flower. To finish it all off, I found this piece of driftwood. And there we go, a beautiful flower for mom. These collage flowers make extra special gifts. If you want to make one, start by finding pictures that remind you of the person you're making your flower for and glue them to cardstock. Then draw a flower petal and cut it out. You can use the cutout petal to trace more petals. Attach your petals together at the bottom with some colorful tape and roll them up. A cardboard tube can help with this. To make the middle of the flower, I trace my hand and cut it out too. Two or three of these rolled together and taped at the bottom are great for the center of your flower. As an added special touch, I put my flower in a piece of driftwood. We've got lots more great ideas like this at Artsuka.com. Artsuka! from the kitchen. Well, Brianna, let's see what we can do. Okay, chip clip, hot scrubber, bottle brush. Hmm. It's a knight in shining armor. It's all in how you look at it. I love making art that moves. It keeps changing. 
Now I made this out of two drain catchers and a paintbrush. Let's make another work of spinning art. Let's make a spinning top out of a piece of cardboard. This piece should work well. I want to make a circle in the middle of the cardboard. And for that, I'll need a dinner plate and a piece of paper. I could trace the dinner plate right onto the cardboard and make it a circle, but this is a little special tip. Instead of tracing it right onto the cardboard, I'm going to trace a circle onto paper. I'm doing this because I need to find the center of the circle. This is an easier way to do it. Now that I have my circle, I'll just very carefully cut the paper out like this. All the way around. Perfect. I'll put this in my trunk of junk. So now that I have my circle, I fold it in half. Then fold it in half again. And this is going to help me find the center of the circle. Unfold it and mark the center. Right there, we found the exact center of the circle. We need that so the spinning top will spin smoothly and won't wobble too much. If I traced on the cardboard, it wouldn't have been quite so easy to do that. Okay, now I can trace my new circle onto the cardboard. So I'll place this piece of paper right into the middle of the cardboard there. And then with my pencil, trace the paper. Once I have that traced, I just take my pencil and poke right in the middle. I have a perfect center mark. And all I need to do now is cut out the cardboard. Now cardboard can be kind of tricky to cut, so you might want to get some help. And once it's cut out, it'll look like this. Now comes the fun part. You can decorate your top any way you like. I'm going to decorate mine using duct tape. I'll take one strip of duct tape and we'll use some yellow to go right along the center. So I have one long stripe going right up like that. And then, oh no, we went through all that trouble to get the circle in the middle. Not a problem. I'll just take my pencil, feel for the hole I made earlier and poke it through. Now we'll use another color. This time I'll use red and I'll go right next to the stripe of yellow. Don't worry if you have extra duct tape on the ends because you can just fold them over like that or if you really want, you can trim them. When I've finished all my stripes, it'll look like this one. Now we need something to make it spin and since this is Art Zuka, I'm gonna use a paintbrush. So I need to take my paintbrush and just poke it through the hole I made earlier. Now if you need to make the hole a bit bigger, you can use your pencil. When we put the paintbrush through, we don't want to put it all the way through, just about the length of your pinky. Mm, that should work right there. And now that I have that in place, I just take a little bit of tape and wrap the tape around like this. If you tape it into place and you try to spin it and it doesn't work, just take the tape off and try again. Let's test it out. Now that is Artzuka. For more fun ideas like this, check out Artzuka.com. Artzuka! And now time for an Artzuka safety message. Remember, when making sound effects, you may not want to do it near sleeping gorillas. <laughs> For my Artzuka Recycle Challenge, I challenged myself to make something out of a dish and a sieve. I put them in a movie starring Paper Bag. Come on and see what I made. 
Oh, and I also put something else in my movie. A pickle. See if you can spot where I put it. Now, sit back and enjoy Cinema Artsuka. Here's the dish, and here's the sieve. Can you guess what it's going to be? Yes, it's a UFO. Now let's see it in a movie. Did you like the movie? I made a UFO out of a dish and a sieve. Hey, did you spot the pickle? Take another look at where I put it. I challenge you to make something out of a dish and a sieve. Be creative because anything goes. And when you do, take a picture and email it to me at the Artzuka website, artzuka.com. What will you Artzuka today?